Hey Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh out on a beautiful Sunday morning uh, in early October. The conditions in Raleigh, North Carolina have been very dry in about the last month. We did just get a whole bunch of rain a couple days ago from Hurricane Ian, but uh, most of the mushrooms haven't sort of responded to that massive rain event. So I expect, you know, by the middle of this coming week, we'll start to see a lot of activity. Uh, you know, I usually peg my, you know, timing to go out expecting post rainstorm mushrooms between like days three and day five uh, but nonetheless there are a number of species that I want to show you today so first of all I want to share this adorable little uh, mushroom so this is a uh, marasmus mushroom it would be called a pinwheel mushroom commonly uh, and the uh, scientific name for this is marasmus fulvopharyngeus uh, I'm really struggling with that one but um, I'm trying to remember it by the Ferengi, uh, which are a, um, you know, group of aliens in Deep Space Nine and the Star Trek universe. Anyway, uh, the pinwheel mushrooms, there's a number of them and they're really beautiful. They have this little black stem and widely spaced white uh, gills underneath. And they're pretty delicate, so you want to be, you know, very nice to them. But you can see they have nice wide spaced gills and these this beautiful, just sort of pleated uh, cap. And so uh, it's really uh, looks like a little, you know, cocktail umbrella maybe. I've always been a big fan of finding them. I'm trying to locate my other specimen. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, uh, you know, they obviously are really dainty little mushrooms, but, um, and I, I seem to have lost it. All right, well, we'll move on. Uh, other dainty mushrooms, here's an edible one. So this is a very common species that a lot of mushroom no hunters know. Uh, so this is Cantharellus cinnabarinus, also known as the cinnabar red or just red chanterelle. It is a dainty little mushroom. So the Cantharellus genus contains uh, a lot of our different um, chanterelle mushrooms and many of them are larger and also more yellowy in color. But this is like construction cone orange and uh small you know and they oftentimes have like a little a little divot in the middle and uh sort of flowery looking here's an older one that has started to split apart so you can see however that the thing that's really nice about these is they have these like forked and um you know wrinkled uh false gills that run down the stem a little bit so you have mushrooms that look similar uh called waxy caps so they have this sort of like scarlet red situation going on but if you flip them over they have deep blade-like gills instead of you know this uh sort of you can especially see the forking happening at the edge of the cap. Uh, so, you know, these mushrooms are edible. There's not much to them, as you can see. Like, I occasionally will gather a few handfuls uh, to put on a mushroom pizza, and that's more because they look nice. I mean, you know, they have a little bit of flavor, but there's not much to taste. All right, so... Um, Oh, here's my other Marasmius mushroom, thank goodness. So this one is a little bit um, different color. And, uh, you know, the one I was showing you before is very, very rusty in color. This one's a little more purple brown. I think it's probably still the same species, but uh, it is possible that is, this is uh, Marasmius pulcheripes, which is described as being more pink and purple in color. But I'm pretty confident it's not. I'm pretty confident it is Fulvo ferengineus. All right, so let's move on to we will talk about uh, ghost pipe. So this is Monotropa uniflora, not a mushroom at all, but rather a uh, mycoheterotroph. So this is a plant that is a parasite and it grows on the mycelium of mycorrhizal mushrooms or mushroom bearing fungi that partner with trees and plants. So basically this is, uh, you know, non-photosynthetic. It doesn't have any of the, uh, you know, structures necessary to make its own food. So instead it will uh, parasitize, um, you know, fungal networks. So it's kind of an interesting relationship. Ghost pipe is distinctive because it has this beautiful uh, sort of pipe-like shape and it has, uh, you know, 
uh, oftentimes it's like pure white and almost shiny, uh, but it, you know, it's very smooth and you often, as it matures, has the, have these like pinky tones come in and that's when I really like it. And, uh, you know, just as far as taking photos and so forth, and you have these different sort of little leaves along both the stem that are, uh, pointed upward and also, uh, around this little, um, sort of blossom type thing. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because there is, um, sometimes people think that, that, uh, Monotropa uniflora is, uh, you know, a threatened or endangered species. Just want to throw it out there. Uh, so this is actually, uh, is categorized as, uh, a G5 as far as its global endangered status. And then in the United States, it is an N5. So G5 is what is, uh, classified as a secure organism as far as the, uh, you know, threats to, uh, extinction. N5 similarly is the United States code for a secure species. And obviously no species on this planet is secure as long as it's sharing its space with uh, us. But nonetheless, that uh, really is um, the just by way of uh, putting you on the, the scale, a G5 or an N5 is the most secure, the most, um, you know, le lowest risk to extinction that you can possibly have. So, uh, you know, I don't collect these. Some people do and tincture them for medicinal purposes and I don't know anything about that but I do uh, you know just want to clarify that this is uh, you know not rare yeah, it's certainly not rare in Raleigh. I, I think there are areas where it is, you know, far less commonly seen, but that doesn't mean that it is actually an endangered uh, or protected or even threatened species. So anyway, I don't collect them. I do like to take photographs of them. This is a single one, but usually you'll find them growing in little clusters and they sort of erupt from the leaves and they're, uh, you know, all pointed in different directions. And it's just this, you know, very beautiful thing uh, to capture. And, uh, you know, again, I don't um, do tincturing of any kind, and so I don't collect them normally. All right, uh, let's talk very briefly also about a mushroom I, I don't know if I've talked about on the channel, uh, turkey tail, Trimedes versicolor. So this is a great... Um, mushroom to just learn to identify because it is so common and it's also pretty like a lot of the mushrooms that I uh, became familiar with because there was some purpose or use for them for people um, once I started to learn more and more mushrooms that interest started to fall away and I started to refocus on mushrooms I already knew that I'm like oh turkey tail is really great for photography it is a beautiful beautiful species so some people do collect it medicinally but as I mentioned I don't you know, use medicinal mushrooms or do tinctures or teas, all that stuff is just, I just don't do it. Uh, but, you know, they are um, oftentimes collected for medicinal purposes, but they do also have just this beautiful uh, sort of zonate and slightly furry, uh, you know, inner, uh, the sort of um, overlapping fruiting bodies. And they're, they're a little bit on the sort of uh, woody or corky side. So when you rip them apart, uh, they're not, um, you know, no, they're not papery. It's not like crumbling up a thick leaf, which some of our, you know, similar uh, species, it is like that. It's more like, oh, it's a really, really thin and, uh, you know, um, fragile leather that I'm tearing apart. The bottom of turkey tail is a porous layer. So it, uh, when it's fresh, and that's the condition this one is in, it's white and porous, so it's a little bit on the rough side. And, uh, you know, again, it gets the name turkey tail because, I mean, just look at that thing. Um, and, you know, it does come in varying colors, so not always this sort of uh, brown uh, and, you know, a little bit of green. Uh, oftentimes I find them in the winter and they're blue. And that's one of my favorite things is to, uh, uh, you know, tromp around in the winter time and look for blue turkey tails and get good pictures of them because, well, in the winter time, there isn't much else that I can do. All right, uh, I want to talk to you briefly about uh, Albatrellis uh, ovinus. So this is known as the sheep's head polypore. Um, I don't eat this mushroom and, you know, some people do. <laughs> I have eaten an Albatrellis mushroom before. It was a really fun experience. Albatrellis alessii, which is known as the greening goat's foot. So it's kind of furry on top. And, uh, you know, like this Albatrellis mushroom, porous underneath, uh, but it has this sort of like tufted uh, furry uh, cap and then it stains green but it is still a really really tasty mushroom so that's probably the like least 
uh, appealing looking mushroom that tasted the best. So on that, uh, you know, the intersection of whatever that graph is, Albatrellus alessii is like dead in the center, weird looking, but also kind of tasty. All right, so uh, Albatrellus ovinus, you'll find it growing. Um, I, I usually find it growing with pine. And, uh, you know, it's sort of rough on top, but it oftentimes is sort of, um, you know, a creamy color. I see a lot of them that have this like yellowish, uh, it's, I don't know if I'd call it staining or bruising or just yellowing with age. Uh, but again, the main thing about Albatrellus as a genus is that they are polypores that oftentimes have a cap and stem. So polypores like my turkey tail, they grow in shelves. They don't have a stem. They just are like growing straight straight on wood, whereas uh, Albatrellus is like, oh, I ha I'm porous underneath, but I also, you know, look, for instance, like uh, a hedgehog mushroom, hidden in, um, you know, one of the hidden species. So uh, anyway, this is a fun mushroom to get to know because uh, from the top, they sure can look like hidden. Uh, and I mentioned that because hedgehog mushrooms are my favorite. And so when I find uh, these albatrellus mushrooms, I'm usually like, oh, well, I feel sorry for myself. And uh, so anyway, to save you some of that pain, I will at least, uh, you know, convey the information that they're, they're not all bad. They just are a little, um, they, they can fool you. And uh, the way that you can tell that you have an albatrellus mushroom and not a uh, hedgehog mushroom is you, uh, you know, your albatrellus is very uh, like um, porous underneath and, you know, it's the pores are very small, so it's quite smooth. Uh, but in the case of hidden mushrooms, you have little spines or teeth underneath. And I want to show you that on a hidden alum mushroom. So this is not an edible species. Uh, and I can't really tell which one it is. I don't know a lot about hidden alum in general. Uh, but they're like woody, corky, and leathery. So this is not a mushroom you could eat, but it does share a feature with those, uh, you know, hidden species, which it has these little teeth or spines underneath. And in the case of hidden alum, it's like often, uh, uh, sort of brown, uh, you know, uh, they're pale to brownish mushroom that has uh, teeth underneath and often brown staining as time goes on. And so like, you know, hidden alum is really quite distinctive from your hedgehog mushrooms because they're not fleshy, they're woody, but also the spines underneath are more, um, the, the undertones are more brown uh, as opposed to being sort of a white or creamy color. All right, so I think I'm going to conclude uh, with a um, just quick look at a um, Lactarius indigo group mushroom because I always like to show off blue mushrooms. So this is one of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the species group called Lactarius indigo. And uh, it's an edible mushroom, unremarkable in my opinion. But the fun thing about it is it's, again, blue all over. You have kind of this like uh, light silvery blue. And what you can see really clearly with this uh, specimen is that as they age, they take these sort of forest green colors too and that's not uh, that's not rot that's like a staining reaction that's pretty common in uh, the lactarius genus so if you're into identifying lactarius mushrooms the green or not green over time thing can really help you sort of narrow down what you have but uh, lactarius indigo group does uh, you know take on some green tones it also has this beautiful zonate stem so these you know little zones of color uh, it almost looks like um, you know an agate to me when I I look at it and a nice big old divot in the middle. And then uh, when you flip it over, you'll see that the gills are kind of bluish, but they also uh, bleed uh, blue juice. And it's like really, really dark blue and really quite abundant. Like even this one, which is dry and has probably been up for several days, uh, still has plenty of juice to offer me. So if you open it up, it immediately, you'll be like, well, that's, you know, I can see why they call that indigo, uh, you know, the indigo milky cap mushroom. All right, so I appreciate your time today. I really hope that you have an opportunity to get some rain and get out in the woods. The fall is just such a wonderful time to uh, do some mushroom hunting in the southeast because my goodness, being able to be out after 10 a.m. sure does feel nice. And, uh, you know, so the weather is very agreeable. Uh, and I hope that you find the mycelium to be agreeable to your basket. <laughs>